they one who's conflict avoidant and the other one who's confrontational like do you have different um, conflict resolution styles how do you guys handle it you can go first <laughs> i think um it's something that we are navigating through um because we are both what um stubborn people um but in our disagreements it's one thing i appreciate is that it's we're never hurtful or disrespectful you know to the other person you know um and we we, we talk you know I, we have this philosophy that we can't go you know to bed the next day and we're still having issues and we're not happy you know with each other and all of those things so um i think on my side we do speak um if it's too heated yeah person will go into their own space and then we come back and be like okay babe i didn't like one two three four five and when you said this i felt like this and it's usually like a misunderstanding or miscommunication mm-hmm. which is like the cause of that conflict yeah, yeah. I would say um I'm more the I don't want to talk about it type of person but it doesn't really go away you know it doesn't really it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really solve the problem and for a very long time that that has been an 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 issue of mine you know I rather just avoid things you know as long as it's it's just let's just avoid it you know but um I think the most important thing is being able to have people around you that that are able to assist you with that conflict and um and also uh, the other point is i want to say is that being able to deal when 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 you sort out the problem you don't sort out the person but rather you sort out the problem so you don't deal with the person you deal with the problem and you don't make it personal so it's not a personal attack because a lot of times we cannot resolve conflict because we've made them personal attacks wa bona wena wa bona wena o stabone and then you know it's yeah you know it's it's it becomes personal and obviously when it becomes personal you get defensive and you're going to you know mm-hmm. want to defend yourself and then you're going to put this wall and you're not going to you either going to avoid it or you're not going to deal with the problem so i would say the most important thing is that um whenever there's a conflict let's try and deal with the problem you know let's sort out the problem and not the person yeah so initially in the early stages of our relationship so she's the let's talk now i want to talk to you <laughs> and i'm the okay i heard you but i'm not really to talk now I and, need to and, process. and 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 that used to make us fight so much because <laughs> she would think i'm trying to avoid conflict but instead because at the time we are in in in, in a position of heightened emotions um i would end up saying things that i'm going to regret So in order to avoid that I would ask that wait man please okay I hear you and I'm sorry mm. and she hates I'm sorry without context you know mm-hmm. so you, so I don't want people to but she eventually so she and, must understand <laughs> yeah but she eventually understood that you know I let me afford this guy an opportunity to calm down and maybe think about what he did or what she did you know <laughs> <laughs> it's always the guy you know <laughs> and then and then come back in a time where everybody's calm mm. and then we can have a decent conversation again yeah. we start the conversation and and that has helped us um a great deal and and also now we are five years into into marriage i have learned to speak my 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 feelings as well because i would and I you would, never used to I, i i would keep a lot um with i would keep quiet a mm. lot you know I've also learned to say hey man um I didn't like what you said. Um at that this, point it, it made me mm, feel like this. Mm. You know. And, and and she would then try to maybe explain no uh, this is what I meant. Yeah, yeah, I understand this is what you meant, but this is how it how made I me felt. feel. Mm. Because there's always conf- uh, confusion be- between what I meant to say mm. and not wanting to hear how that made somebody feel. Mm. because it can cause conflict in its in itself yes um conflict is one of those um, experiences in marriage almost like you dread to be in a conflict space mm. uh, 
um, cause it creates that uneasiness um, it it just creates that space like geez we just didn't know that we would bump our head into something whether it be it big or be it small um, one of the things that we got to learn about each other in marriage um, because I think when we were still dating I don't think we had conflict that we parted ways be- not agreeing on them you know in marriage it's like even if we don't agree we still need to come back to the same bed um more as i said earlier on i'm an introvert i like to internalize i like to process information whenever we bump ourselves into conflict i don't want to react right now let's talk about it now let's address it now so that we can have peace in the world you know our peace contributed okay i'm just kidding but so that we get <laughs> well, we can peace. yes we can have peace no i would rather prefer just give me a moment let me internalize my moment could be like the whole day let me think about it let me internalize it before I, before we could come up with the solution my wife on the other hand being an extrovert and i don't know whether it comes with an with the qualities of being an extrovert when we bump ourselves into conflicts like let's speak about what's really hurting you in this let's speak let's speak about it now i just don't like this awkward space that currently we find ourselves in you know i don't know what you're thinking about jeez dude free me let's speak about it i just want to get the elephant excuse the pun out of the room you know <laughs> so so we needed to find each other find a way that works for us and one of the ways is that the person that calls time out in a conflict he has the responsibility to give a timeline to say i'm not ready to talk about it now but we're not going to leave it for the whole week while mm. it's busy eating you like a slow slow poison inside of you say i'm not ready to talk about it now can we please try let's speak about it tomorrow morning or tomorrow midday or afternoon at least you the person who naturally you want to address it now at least you've just heard that let's talk about it tomorrow at least it gives you that okay um i have not just put you into your naughty corner and i don't want to do anything about mm. you you know the person who calls time out has the responsibility to tell the other person please give me time x number of hours or a day and then we will talk about it the other point which for me works is whenever we're about to hit a long trip we know that no one is going to be stepping out of a car you know that's when i bring back it's like you remember such and s- oh somebody saying you evil you know <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so no i would bring those things like x y and z you remember when you said that um I never understood. Can you say it again? Because I just want to test my understanding. And we begin to address those in those instances. We are in the car. We are put on aircon because it's about to get hot right in the car. You know, <laughs> so we address it. Um, I normally would bring it in that. Um, <laughs> in in our marriage, which is quite weird, um, I'm the one that raises issues. Yes like yeah. um so when there are issues I'm the one that will probably say listen we need to talk about 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 um and yeah so I think for me it's open communication the, the 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 value of psychological safety you know like creating a safe space in your marriage where your partner can raise issues and 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 you don't take it personally you realize that this person is raising the issue because they want to build the marriage they want to build the relationship and as well um the words that you choose you know as you are discussing issues which is where the challenge becomes um you know not attacking your partner not mm. being rude and 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 all kinds of things it's 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 essential because the words are the ones that are going to heal yeah. you know through your words you are condemned through your words um you are rescued or delivered so it is important that one chooses the right words um chooses the right moment chooses the right words chooses the right place 
So I am more of a, I, I raise issues. I've had to learn to confront them because I'm not a generally confrontational person. That's a skill that I had to work on. Um, so now I think I'm, I'm, a, I'm able to take it on and just kind of say, look, we need to discuss some issues and I'll try and be as nice as possible mm -hmm. and, and be nice so that you see that I'm not really attacking you, but mm -hmm. the issue has to be dealt with because we can't really avoid it. Yeah, I agree. Um, also, the, the issue of talking and being open also, because um, I think in a sense we, we talk, maybe after that heated moment, we'll come back and talk and say, this was the issue, this is how I felt, and and being open about your feelings, not not harboring something and mm -hmm. hoping she'll know. She wouldn't know if you don't tell her. So that's, that's, that's how we, we navigate through those issues. We talk and we ensure that everyone is sorted after talking and we deal with the issue right then and then. Yeah. I think one of the things that has helped us love over the years is the very... We, we were given three rules of engagement when it comes to conflict by our pastors from Cape Town who did our primary counseling and helped us with the marriage um, journey a long time, nine years ago. They, they said, draw boundaries. There's certain things that can't be said when you, even if you are in your angriest of states, you can't call him by certain names. And for us, we really took that to heart because, you know, guys, I would be so angry sometimes. I, I literally just want to just strangle him to death. But I know there's certain words that can't come out of my mouth. Not necessarily because I'm his wife, but also because I'm a believer. Also because I walk after Christ. And for me, that is why it's so important. I don't think marriage can work without God. That's my personal belief. And as a result, the Holy Spirit and what we learn about conforming to Christ becomes so central because there's certain ways you can't speak. Even if you are at your angriest, mm. you still have a way to communicate. Yes. And also because I honor him um, as a leader, I honor him as my husband. There's an approach that I have when we speak, no matter how, I will never just, hey, why, and throw my hands at him and think, it's things that I just had to learn from the onset. That's it, it's a no-go area, it's a boundary to say, even if you have conflict, because you will have, you are two minds that think differently, that do things differently, but there's a certain way in which you address a situation. So that's the first thing. And the second thing was, embracing i am sorry and i forgive you that's what we live by i'm very quick to say i'm sorry i've learned early on that when you are being defensive and you just want to blame something else or somebody else over whatever situation that's there it can only lead to more issues so i'm very quick to say i'm sorry sincerely and i'm very quick to forgive and one of the things that I am intentional about is if when my husband, like this morning. So yesterday we had a trip from Durban. We came back yesterday and we were both tired. And I said, let me quickly unpack the suitcase while he was taking a shower. And then when I'm done, you'll do the same. And then after I took a shower, Umugai just went to bed. I'm like, hey, Anna, I also need to take a shower and we still need to unpack, you know. And... He was like, I don't know what you mumbled. I didn't even hear you, but you just were gone. Hey, I'm sleeping, blah, blah, blah. Then he slept. So this morning, I didn't make a big deal out of it. This morning before I went to church, because I usually leave early because I serve in the worship team. And then he says, before you leave, I just want to apologize. Yesterday, I didn't speak to you the right way. And I didn't even, I wasn't even offended at it. But that's the kind of lifestyle that we live. I don't need to point it out. If his conscience... And this is where the Holy Spirit is so important because the Holy Spirit will tell you if you haven't spoken right <laughs> with somebody. And when he said that, I was like, oh my, I didn't even realize, but you are forgiven. And those words release him and we know we can bury this thing here on. So the first thing is the boundaries, 
just being aligned on what can be said and how far we can take a discussion and not calling each others each other with ungodly names and number two is to be quick to say i'm sorry and to be quick to forgive it's always important when you have offended you want to hear somebody saying i forgive you it's okay and that that has worked for us um i think apart from the fact that we the lord has worked in our hearts to be kind to each other the bible says that love is kind and i think no matter how angry you are leave room for kindness you you cannot be you cannot do an ugly angry where you start calling people things and you start questioning their intentions and you start because in other in other words you are no longer building but you are destroying so it's not wrong to be angry but it's wrong to be angry ugly yeah, I think so. you've broken it down nicely that and it's something that we've sort of progressed or yeah. keep on learning I think at each conflict because <laughs> we've gotten so bit, uh, better at and, and and I'll speak a lot about me because I used to get so I would get angry yeah. for over like a long time mm-hmm. and oh, only yeah, yeah, yeah. and I I think it it lasts probably a few hours now yeah. Where I'm like, Mm-mm, I don't like that. Just give me a moment, you know, because I've taken also leadership from him in terms of how he would like come down and then be rational about it, so that we then understand and fight, remembering that we love each other. Yeah. Because I think that's important to understand that we love each other. We're here yeah. because we love each other. And we're fighting because sometimes I fight him for him. Yeah. Fights me for me for my yeah. good to yeah. say you're not doing this for yourself. Or whatever the case is or you're not prioritizing yourself or you're mm-hmm. complaining about this however long and then you know what i mean we fight because we love each other and that's why we've learned i think yeah. over some time to fight with love yeah more than anything yeah, yeah. and how do you handle finances in a marriage okay <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i'm the money guy um at home yeah so i'm the money guy um, I'm a saver, so uh, my brain works like a calculator. So as a result of that, basically, I'm the one that budgets. That's the number one thing. I'm mm-hmm. the one that sets the budget. We talk about what's needed. We talk about what is important. There's that constant communication about what is important. What do we need to do? Where are we going? Mm-hmm. And when we set that, then the budget kind of dictates to us what needs to be done um when do we do it and so on because you need to be accountable for the finances that are coming through um so in terms of finances my wife is is better now when we started she was a proper spender you know (laughs) and um you know she still spends because i when whenever we talk about spending we say in 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 general you would think that the saver is the more important of the two like between the spender and 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 a saver but actually both of them are super important yes. because if i did not have a spender then um i'd live a very boring life you know so my wife is the one that makes sure that this, the the money gets spent properly um and you know that helps it it really helps a lot because it spices up my life and with her it makes the money accessible but i'm also the the break you know i'm the one that makes sure we are going at 220 now let's lower the speed you know and and come down mm-hmm. so the number one way that we we do finances is through budgeting mm-hmm. um you know because then at least we have an idea of where's the money going and we talk about the money as much as it's a very uncomfortable conversation yes. uh-huh. it's very difficult to talk about where money is going um, and why money has to go that way but you have to have those difficult conversations one of the things that's important about a mature relationship is that you are able to have uncomfortable conversations without taking it personally mm-hmm. and money is one of them um, it's it's knowing your your relationship with money like mm-hmm you're having a proper personal relationship with money you know a secure relationship is the word with money so once you have that then it helps um, you to as married partners to you know share and have all things in common Mm -hmm. basically 
and no one feels like they are being outdone. Money is not weaponized, yes. which I feel is very unfortunate. So my money is her money, and and her money is my money. <laughs> Finances. So. So it. Let's just talk. Maybe talk about the challenge of finance oh, in the, the beginning before we got to a system that we have now. <laughs> so know. let me. See. I'll, I'll go. <laughs> so finance, like. We grew up in different homes and different styles yes. of yeah. life, right? Sure. He had, and you'll correct me, babe, mm-hmm. or just tell me to what extent do I go? <laughs> but oh. he had, I think, a difficult childhood in terms of just growing up, yeah. right? And that's when you grow up like in a, in a difficult environment, it's very different how you sort of build a relationship with money. And with me... I grew up in a sort of middle, middle class type of home okay. where I'm going to a multiracial school and my mother is teaching us you have an allowance and this is the much you get and for however long. So because there's that differences, we needed to understand that, that we're coming from different backgrounds and this is how we both perceive money. So we fought about it in the beginning a lot. because he'll get paid and then all of a sudden he doesn't have money. It, D10 or whatever the case is and we have I'm like Jadi <laughs> you know what I mean so we had to take a few steps back to say this is why <laughs> this happens this way and therefore then having a system that we have today which you can speak to <laughs> I needed to give context um open honest I don't think I think yes we are individuals and um, we share ideas so nobody's going to dictate to another person what they should do but at the end of the day we call it our money um, so we do talk and discuss oh I have this idea or I want to do this or I want to buy this or I saw this pair of jeans I'm going to buy it but we have a very open um, a very open and transparent communication about money hmm. um, and everything else so I think we started from the onset, like during our courtship, we're very open about, okay, where, you, where are you financially? Because we knew where we're heading to. So we had to have a very open and transparent policy about money because I know that money can cause a lot of issues in marriage. Yeah. So before we, we get to the system, I needed to also acknowledge that I'm bad with money. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how to manage money. And especially now that I'm, I'm, in, I'm in business, I don't get a regular income. When I do get mm-hmm. paid, um, I've, we've, we've sort of gotten into a system where I'll, I'll give her 70% of, of the money and, and I'll be left with just operational money for petrol, for just basic things. But mm-hmm. knowing, having the comfort that everything at the house has been, has been covered. And so far, it's been working on this. Mm. You know, so yeah. We are transparent like that, very open. Mm. She knows what I get when I get it. I know how much she gets it. She, she gets. Um, we have various responsibilities in the house. Uh, she handles all of them by, you know, managing the managing whole house, all of, all of, all of, the household, all of the household with money. what we have in the kitty, yeah. we'll call it. Yeah. And then I'll know this is your allowance, this is mine, this is what we have to yeah. do for the kids. And so forth. So I basically manage and organize yeah, no. it from that end. Yeah, buys yeah. me a lot of peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the same for me. Um, it's being open. She she knew from day one where I am financially. What have I saved up to so far? I mean, I can't come to her and say I want to marry you and and there's nothing basically. So she she knew from my internship. This is the salary I'm getting. First job. This is the salary that I'm getting. Uh, even my third job now she knows and we are open in that sense because it also helps you to plan and she knows what are the things that you can reach and things that you cannot reach financially so i think openness is is very key yeah what's your view on headship and submission then because i know there are certain males who'd say no but i'm the head even though i'm not good with it i'm Mm -hmm. gonna manage it because i'm the head of this household Mm -hmm. so what is your view and how does it look like in your marriage Hmm. Sheesh. That's a good question. I am, I'm, I'm of the view that being a leader means taking your team and using their best attributes 
for the for the good for the good of the team so if if yes i'm the leader i don't have to do everything as the leader i i need to be smart enough to delegate tasks hmm. and leave the stuff that i'm good at with me you know yeah so i don't have to handle money because i'm the head if i'm not good at it because then my family my family's welfare is going to be consistently compromised okay do you no, you, no, no, you answer that and then okay. I will add on to what you okay. say. <laughs> what, I, what I say about headship and submission is this. To submit doesn't mean you don't have an opinion. Mm. To submit just basically says you are saying, look, um, because you are the CEO in this family, let me support your decision. Let yeah. me support the, the choice that you've made here. Because what I, what I say about being a head in the family is exactly the, how you run a company. Um, the husband is a CEO. The wife is the COO of the family. She's the chief operations officer. So know why CEO makes decisions without thinking through it and um, allowing the other members of the, um, you know, the business to actually input. Mm -hmm. So you are not a smart CEO if you are the one that's always making the decisions and you don't consider other people's perspective, you know, about the matter. You know, your headship lies entirely on the fact that you have considered all variables, all the wisdoms that are there from the COO, the C the CFO of the company, and you put them together and you come up with the wisest plan. So headship for me is being CEO, um, submission is being COO. And if if you've noticed, both of them are very important for running a, a, a proper marriage and a proper company. So I, I, I think that really sums up submission for me. So the, the COO will say, listen, this is what I'm thinking. This is the direction we need to take for these various reasons. And the CEO will, will kind of think through it and come up with the best decision that's going to make sure that this company stands um, without isolating other people and making them feel like their suggestions and thoughts are not um, important. In fact, one of the biggest... Uh, most effective people in my decision making is my wife because she she's quite good at um, giving solid advice so it may appear as if the CEO has made a decision but it's actually the COO who came up with everything and it's up to the CEO to make sure that he honors the COO by mentioning that this idea came from the COO that's how submission works it's it's to basically say listen i'm going to tell you what i think but you are the one that's going to make that decision ultimately and i will support you but at least you know the perspective you know where i'm coming from um and 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 that's what makes the biggest difference yeah so submission as well is kind of like kind of offering the respect that is there because men are ego driven so as well you know respect means a lot to them um so by submitting, you're basically saying, listen, um, I'm going to tell you what I think um, and then and I'll tell you why I think what I think. And then you can make the decision at the end of the day. If you allow me to make the decision, I will make it as well. It's just kind of um, allowing the leader to lead and allowing the operations officer to do the operating. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Tough one. For, for me, it looks like the same way as... Um, Christ loving the church and the church being <coughs> submissive to Christ. For me, that's basically it. So um, with, with, with my wife here, there's no moment where I feel like, okay, I'm your head now. No, or emphasize that. There's never a need to emphasize that. I think we are more than equals, more than being a, there's a head and someone is submitting. We are equals. We communicate. We talk about issues. So there isn't a moment where I feel like I need to be the head now and, and drive this thing. Yeah. Mm. That's what I think. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Which is which is true because there's certain things. I mean, he would I would I would go out and go out for lunch and he'd be like, no go, he'll hand and the, the nice thing about a, a husband that has been nurtured by both mom and grandmother, he can take care of himself, he can take care of the household, <laughs> he can take care of everything when he chooses <laughs> so it's, it's it's quite nice to have that perspective 
from him because that's what he does in application across everything. It's not just money. It's yeah. it's the way in which we share chores. Yes. We do, you know, we know he's a morning person. I'm an evening person. In yeah. the morning, he'll prepare the kids. In the evening, I prepare the kids and birth the kids and make sure everything is done. So it's it's a natural yeah. thing for us just to manage yeah. our home. Mm. And I, I believe that it's also a matter of partnership as well. You know, in a partnership, we work together. Mm. And um, being the head, it does not necessarily mean it's my gang, it's not and you know, at my way or the highway. But it's rather saying a head gives this direction, this vision, this sight, and 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 submission is just basically saying, you know what? Like what my husband said, we will sub, I will support what you are doing and and I, I believe that the the COO plays the most important role as well the, actually everyone has got a role to play let me rather put it that way where the CEO gives direction and the CEO makes things happen so it's understanding your roles what as the husband this is my role as the wife this is my role and working together to making sure that the vision gets accomplished so and and I, and and I think I'd also say it's not that by 50-50 it's not about you know you being a doormat you know and I believe for a long time that's what submission has been defined as being a doormat as somebody who doesn't have a backbone who doesn't have a say but if we look at the the woman in the bible and and how they've somehow managed to to make decisions and how yes. they've they've helped their husbands to make great decisions yes you know so i would say it's 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 submission is not really being a doormat but it's rather saying you know what i'm going to support you and help you in the decision making and and and, and i think both couples i mean the couple both people would need to put in a hundred percent you know, there's let's go 50-50, but it's not about going 50-50. What happens to the other 50? If you bring in 50, where's that, that, the other 50 going? So it's a matter of 100%, 100%. Yeah. Okay, so for me, um, before I got married, even before I met him, um, I, I don't know if it was a re- revelation or whatever, but getting to understand that even Christ um, submitted to the father in as much as he he himself was god you know um he submitted to the will of the father so that was one thing that i got and i understood that in as much as as powerful as i am you know i am able to what submit it's not subservience i'm not subservient to him i'm not less than him um and I'm not made to feel like I'm less than or my not as important. Um, and I think at the heart of our marriage is it's mutual respect. You know, he respects my opinion, I respect his, and we do not make a decision, you know, without each other, especially like an important life decision. And we like, yeah. So I think that mutual respect is key in that role of headship and submission and i respect him and i honor him as a as the man of the house yeah allow me to speak to christian couples we cannot operate the marriage machine without using the manual that god has given us mm-hmm. especially for young couples I came into marriage independent. I started working. I've got my own money. I don't need you. And it's great. We're friends. I love it. But I can survive without you. That's great. That's awesome. And and I think you should keep that um, if you're a wife. But also what is important is to understand the fundamentals of what the Bible teaches about marriage. Mm -hmm. It's not enslaving. It is not praising patriarchy when the bible says submit to your husband it's because god knows that that's the formula that that works in class we say in kunzas bini is cannot work if that makes sense and so two bulls in one crown cannot work and this is the point he was talking about when i was saying i'm accomplished 
accomplished at work and wherever else, you know. But when I get home, this is my Lord. This is my leader. This is the person who leads the way in my family. I can pray. I can hear the Holy Spirit myself. But when he says, baby, you know, I don't feel good about this. I, I press a pause and I say, okay, tell me more. Because at that point, I'm honoring what the Bible teaches. And it's unfortunate that we want to have prosperous marriages and good marriages and excellent marriages, but we neglect what the Bible teaches about marriage. We cannot neglect what the owner of the machine says this is how you operate this and we want to operate it and when it's dysfunctional we're like hold on <laughs> you know we've been taking all that the world has been saying and sometimes what the bible teaches is not aligned to what the world teaches the world teaches be empowered say whatever you want nobody must box you self-love that is great and i i align with that the bible doesn't teach self-hate but to a certain extent, we lose it when we begin to elevate the teachings of the world above the teachings of the word. If we are to build Christian marriage, we have to go back and realize, I know my position when it comes to my husband. I can stand in the boardroom and say what I want to say. I can stand if I'm in a club, investment club, whatever, I can, I can say and make my views heard and take the lead because I'm a lead there. But when I come home, he is the lead. There's no two ways about it. And for me, I've received so much peace from that. I've received so much joy in understanding that I don't want to always be in control because God has ordained somebody to be in control in the situation. And it's, it's, it's really given us a lot of fruit in our marriage. I don't know when was the last time we had a conflict as an example. Not because we don't disagree. Oftentimes we disagree because I've got a mind of my own. <laughs> you know, oh wow, baby, do you have to laugh so hard? Like, you're like, yeah. <laughs> but I express the mind of my own understanding that we are equal, but we are not equal. 